Hello everybody, welcome to My Good Life. I'm Usma. Over the last few weeks, I have been showcasing mental fitness exercises. And so far we've done one and two, and we're going to do exercise three today. But before I move on to exercise three, I just want to do a little recap of how my last week has been, and also to share some of the thoughts of the reasoning behind doing these exercises. So here it is. Last week, when I did my chart here, the personal, the social, and the work, that is the first exercise, if you recollect, and put it together, and you'll see this little pink slip here. That is exercise two, where I was monitoring my sleep. And I, I didn't sleep well that day, because what happened, although I finished work at 8 p.m., as I started the drive back home, an accident happened, other things came in the way, and by the time I got home, it was 11 p.m. My food was out of sync, I hadn't eaten, and various other things had happened around the house. So I had a very restless sleep. So I know that. And that's the point. Sometimes when you do these charts, there's only a limit to what you can monitor. You can monitor what you're doing around your work and your personal life and your social life, but things will happen. And if they do, don't worry about it. This happens. That's life. And you, but how you overcome those things and how long the, uh, that feeling lasts is what matters. What I'm trying to showcase in these exercises, and there are six, and we're halfway there now with the third one this today, is that I would like these exercises to become habits. Because when you do something rep repetitively and consistently, it then forms a behavior pattern. A behavior pattern that your brain understands and it becomes automatic. Just like physical exercise, where you are required to do it for a set period of time to ensure that you get to a level of fitness where there's that muscle memory. The same thing happens with mental fitness exercises and, and me showcasing how, I, how you can do this right if you know the basics of it. The more you do it, the more it becomes a habit and you will then automatically get to a stage where you will do it in your head. It's taken me about five years and now I can do these exercises in my head. But it takes a while and it's okay if it takes a while. Think bumps will happen along the way. So please do persevere. Right, enough said. I shall move on to telling you about exercise three. It's raining. Oop, it's raining, and I better get my uh, <laughs> thing out. Okay. Sometimes you can't hear if you don't put this right. Okay. Let's. Even though it's raining. I still like to come out and think about things. Exercise three. I'm going to write down 
three things I want from myself practically and three things I would like some from for my how I would like to feel emotionally in the next six months. That's exercise three. So let me give you an example. One of the things I would like in the next six months is to increase my YouTube footfall through subscriptions. And to do that, I've got to ensure that the content and various other algorithms are in sync. That requires me to study this a little bit more. I think I can achieve that in the next six months. And emotionally, what I'd like that to do is to make me feel empowered, that I, am fe that I feel good about doing this exercise doing something uh, that I think is worthwhile to share with others. Now that's one practical thing and one emotional thing associated with that practical element. I would, and I would encourage you to think of three, three to do, three practical things and three emotional things. The way I do this is I spend about two days thinking about the practical and emotional aspect and I ask myself questions. So for example, let's take the example of this YouTube uh, um, footfall I'd like to increase. If I said, oh I just want my, to feel happy about it, that's not an emotion that I would write down. I want to break it down. Break down what does happy mean to, to you, what, yourself? Well, in, my, in this case, to me, what does happy mean? What, that, what would that happiness make me feel? And as far as I'm concerned, it would make me feel empowered. So that's the emotional. I want to feel empowered. If you choose to do this exercise, it's quite a hard exercise to do. That's why I say spend time, spend two days thinking of one practical and one emotional thing that you would like to achieve in the next six months. How do you, do, how do you write it down? Well, in my case, I'm going to open here. I'm going for a walk. I use my phone to just jot down that, you know, I may have an inspirational thought. If you'd like to do it old school, write it down. Fantastic, write it down. If you'd like to, uh, I don't know, video it, you can do it. But any way you want to do it, record it. Record it in a manner that suits you so that by the end of a week or two weeks, you have written down three practical things and three emotional things you would like in the next six months. Six months. Now, why six months? Because it is, you, you need to write something down that is achievable. Something that you want to strive towards. That will make you feel that you are moving on in that year in a direction that you feel is positive and right for you. After all, this is mental fitness. We are here to improve our behaviours, our thoughts and our feelings about ourselves. Right, hey, I'm back at the famous tree. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to show the link. Uh, a lot of people like that. My famous apple trees that are asleep over winter. So, until next time everybody, I'm off for a walk in this rain and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>